In the last video, we went over how to uh, embed lessons onto, I mean, embed gravity forms onto Lifter LMS lessons. And now we're going to talk about how to uh, use Lifter LMS gravity forms along with gravity forms and the gravity forms user registration extension. Um, so that user registration setting, it's, a, it's another uh, Gravity Forms plugin. It's one of their premium plugins. You have to have, a, I think, a developer license in order to get it, or maybe a pro license, or whatever they call it. Uh, but I got a copy of that here, and I'm just going to install that. Um, I'm going to turn my mouse there. So we've got that installed. Um, and, and I showed you previously that there's really no settings for Lifter LMS Gravity Forms. But now once we have this um, additional Gravity Forms extension inst installed, you can go over to Lifter LMS settings and click the integrations tab. And we'll see our Gravity Forms, which was previously empty, um, except for the, the helper information, now has these uh, couple new sets of settings. Um, so this first one um, is going to allow us to uh, create a user registration form that will be used instead of the Lifter LMS user registration forms. And the second one is going to allow us to overtake the Lifter LMS edit account form with a gravity forms edit account form. Uh, so before we do anything with those settings, we're gonna need gravity forms to service both of these needs. Uh, so we'll go create a new form, we'll just call this user, user registration. Um, register below. And uh, we'll create this form. Um, and then we're gonna go over to the advanced fields here. And, let's, uh, and you, you can put whatever fields you want in here, but we're just gonna be um, pretty, pretty pretty straightforward. We'll just do like a username, uh, first name, last name. Uh, an email address is required. Um, and I think that a password is optional for the plugin um, because it'll automatically generate an email or password if, if you don't enter one. But I'm going to put a password in here just so we don't have to wait for emails to show up. So we'll keep it basic there. I'm going to uh, add one additional field. We'll do like a phone number field. Um, and uh, maybe we'll do an address field. So no, we'll just do a phone number, and I'll show you how we can integrate with some of the Lifter LMS fields here. Um, so we've updated this form, and now we're going to create a user, user registration feed for it. Um, so we'll call this registration. Um, and we're going to create, have this create a user. Um, and now we can just map all the fields in our form to our user, our new user that'll be created. Um, nickname, we'll just do like a full, so you can, you can go through and set all these settings. Email address, password, um, and you can select a role here. I'm gonna select student as the role, uh, but that's not actually necessary for Lifter LMS. Um, it's just the role we create when you register them. Um, so you can choose any role you want. I would be careful with some of the higher power roles. I'd recommend student, you can do whatever you want. Um, and now we also selected that phone number field, so we'll select phone here. Um, and you'll already have these LLMS underscore ones, and you should be able to figure out which ones are which. Um, but this will map a directory to the Lifter LMS field. Uh, you don't have to do that. You could create a custom one. Um, again, the Lifter LMS ones will already be there for you. So if you did some billing address fields too here, you can map those to the Lifter LMS fields that we already have. Um, this will, uh, there's some additional options that Gravity Forms will send emails. Um, it can require user activation, but please note if you enable this um, and, uh, and require to, to, to send an activation email during the Lifter LMS checkout for a new user, that'll slow down the checkout process because they'll have to activate before they can log in to actually purchase. Um, and uh, to be completely honest, I don't know really what this registration condition does. Um, I think you could probably do something like um, having like a custom like anti-bot type field or something like that where they need to create some, do some math before they can register or something like that. Um, I'm going to leave that one alone and disabled for now. So we've got our, our registration form set up here. Um, and then if we go over to back to our Lifter LMS settings and refresh the page, we now have our user registration form. Um, I'm going to check all these options and click save. And now if I go over in a new tab, we'll go to, um, let's say that here. Uh, we'll go to the um, My Courses page where users can register. Um, oh, I've got some interesting settings here. So that's showing up. Uh, I've got the, uh, 
the launch pad side by side registration thing set up in this. I guess working kind of weird here. Um, we'll just disable that layout for a moment. Um, so anyway, so we'll see. We now have our gravity form here. Where previously, if we um, oops, I uh, before I selected that, just so we can compare, we have the um, the regular lifter LMS uh, registration form here. And uh, if we select that gravity form, it will just automatically replace that here. Uh, this will also, if you use the lifter LMS uh, shortcode for displaying the user registration, like lifter LMS underscore user underscore registration, it will also display this form um, instead of that form there. Uh, so let's just create a quick user with a bunch of gobbledygook here. Um, and we'll see here that, uh, you know, it does all the validations that gravity forms would do. Um, and then copy this email address too, so I can now submit. Uh, and this does not automatically log you in the way Lifter LMS does, but um, that user I registered now can log in. Um, so now that we're logged in, we'll, and, and I'll also show you here, this is a certificate that I have set up um, that is triggered upon user registration. So even, um, even if you have engagements set up that are triggered off Lifter LMS, um, uh, triggers, so this is a new user registration awarded that test certificate. Um, those will still fire regardless of whether or not you're using the actual Lifter LMS forms. Um, so now that we're logged in, we can create another form two here. We'll go back to Gravity Forms and do another new form. And this time we're going to be do the edit account form. Um, edit your account below. That's not really necessary, but you can put it in there if you want. Um, and then uh, we're going to do all those same fields, or at least some of them. I don't remember everything that we had. Do email, we'll do a password field. I think I had a phone number field in there. Uh, good enough. You get the idea. Um, so we'll update that form, and then we're going to go again. We're going to create a user registration feed, and this one will be the update account info or something. This one will be an update user feed. Um, they're pretty intelligent here, but we'll have to do some selections here to map the fields together. Uh, email address, password, uh, preserve the current user role. That's what we want to do here. We want to stay. Um, and then we'll do the phone number thing again here. And we'll select the phone number field. Um, so we will update those. And we'll see now, um, if we go to our account settings page, we just have the regular Lifter LMS um, account info screen um, or edit info screen. And uh, if we come back to our settings here and uh, refresh this, and we select a edit account form, um, I'll do all the same options again. And then when we refresh this, we now have that new form that we just created, which will allow your users to update their accounts. Um, so that's what you can do with the Lifter LMS Gravity Forms uh, extension add-on and uh, Gravity Forms user registration extension. If you have any questions, as always, please just submit a support request. Take care.